So it says the width of the central peak in a single slit diffraction pattern is. Okay, that's not giving me a. Can you actually draw this thing <laughs> to even um, even draw even uh, label the information I'm being given? So uh, it's talking about some kind of a central peak. So it's referring to a single slit diffraction pattern. So let me first draw a single slit diffraction pattern so that I have something to refer to. So this is a single slit of some aperture A. Imagine I have light wave incident on this single slit. It diffracts through and this is going to produce a pattern on a far away screen that um, it qualitatively will look like this. There will be a central maximum. And one thing that distinguishes diffraction pattern with a double slit interference pattern is that um, with a diffraction pattern, the central maximum is the brightest peak. And then after that, it kind of fizzles out. This is, I think, one of the reasons why it's more interesting with a single slit diffraction to talk about this diffraction minima. So, oh, oh so what the question is referring to is uh, the width of the central peak. Let me refer to this as, I don't know, uh, W width. So the question is giving me that width. The wavelength of the light is, okay, that's the wavelength and the screen is some distance D from the slit. Uh, wait, is that? No, I think your text normally uses letter X. So let me use X. Um, D particular, in particular is I think a bad choice because it's the letter we use for separation between double solid. So, sorry, my computer is, um, it's probably one of the software I'm running in the background that's Causing issues, but it's fine. Okay, <laughs> have all that. All right, um, that feels like a complete statement of the physical setup. So what I really need to do is um, this uh, width is not something that I have a formula for right away. Um, so I need to relate this to these other quantities. In fact, you know, it's gonna be asking for what is the width of the slit. Width of the slit is gonna be my A. So I need to relate this to these other quantities through what I know about single slit interference. And sorry, single slit diffraction. And this is one of the uh, formulas that are derived in your textbook and hopefully you have some familiar with it too and those familiar, which is um, the um, expression for angular position of inter uh, diffraction minimum. And the condition for that was given as uh, the aperture times the position sign of the angular position was equal to n lambda where n is um, integer uh, one or plus minus one, two, uh, three and so on, and uh, quite pointedly not zero because zero will give you the central maximum. So, and um, just to, to make sure you don't confuse it, this is for diffraction minimum. And I covered this in lecture, how this looks very familiar to double slit interference maximum. Don't confuse that. Even though they look very similar, the argument through which you arrive at either of those two formulas are very different. So, okay, so this expression actually gives me a way to express the position of this uh, uh, first um, in diffraction minimum. So this, uh, what I might label as theta one, um, it can be expressed in terms of this. So let me write a version of the equation here. Um, A sine theta one, is going to be equal to n equals to one, so just uh, lambda. So I, I think what I can do is I can express this uh, distance delta y from the central maximum to the um, delta y, central maximum to the first diffraction minimum, and my width will be twice this delta y. So 
to express this delta y, I'm looking at this right triangle here formed by uh, this, this, this. And I have a feeling that uh, looking at these numbers, that um, if I use small angle approximation, that small angle approximation is going to be valid. So let me use a small angle approximation just because it kind of makes um, calculation easy. <laughs> so using small angle approximation, my theta one is approximately given by, um, you know, so this equation becomes approximately a theta one is equal to lambda. So my theta one is approximately lambda over a as long as I express the same radians. And my delta y, it's a uh, tangent of theta one times x. Um, delta y, in exact form would be uh, x times the tangent of theta one. And so if a small angle approximation is valid, this will be approximately x times lambda over a. So um, the width is double that. So width should be approximately um, two times x times lambda over a. So, um, so yeah, and, and this approximation should be valid in the limit that uh, lambda over a is very small. And looking at this three millimeter for a and 550 nanometer for lambda, I think uh, the approximation is gonna hold. So, oh, oh so the, I need to solve this for A. So the width of the slit A is equal to um, 2X lambda, 2X lambda over width of the pattern. Um, so A is equal to 2X lambda over W. And I will leave it, um, up to you to plug in the numbers. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. Um, okay, any questions on this part? Not seeing any, let me move on to uh, part B, determine the ratio of the intensity at four millimeter from the center of the pattern to the intensity at the center. Uh, okay, so, I, I, okay, I think I do want to kind of plug in the numbers here. So it says, um, so it's an application of a formula that you might have looked up in one of the previous questions <laughs> out of section 4.2. And um, so I need to copy over two equations here um, so that I have it to refer to, which are, The, um, so I'm just gonna solve this for I over I naught. That intensity at any particular location divided by I naught is given by square of sine of this beta over beta. And the quantity beta is defined in the section. If you scroll up, uh, it's here. And one thing you have to remember is that this beta is a, it's a kind of an angular quantity. And um, especially when you compute sine of beta, you have to be, you have to make sure that you are uh, plugging in beta in correct units. So beta is uh, pi a over lambda times sine theta. You know, one thing I kind of want to do and check the validity of as I'm plugging the numbers into the system is, um, if I, oh wait, no, no, no. So I, I don't think I can use a small angle approximation with the beta necessarily. Yeah, so so I, I won't try to use a small angle approximation, um, but my, my theta is still at four millimeter of distance um, or four millimeter from central maximum where X is 2.1 meters uh, with, uh, with the sine theta, I can still use a small angle approximation. So I can say my beta is approximately equal to pi a theta over lambda. And this will naturally be in radians. 
and um, theta in radians is the, um, so let me call this a position y1 um, divided by x. So my theta in radians will be y1 over x. So plugging that in here, my beta is pi a y1 over lambda x. Okay. Um, yeah, so the rest is plugging the numbers. So I think it, especially for formula like this one, it's kind of just easy to work out beta numerically and then numerically plug it in here. So let me work it out here numerically on a calculator. So doing that. Um, let's see. Um, I have pi times the, oh, sorry, I jumped the gun. I didn't work out A here numerically. So I'm gonna have to plug in this expression and then simplify it, I'll do it that way. Uh, so pi times um, 2x lambda over w times y1 over lambda x. Oh, I actually like that. It cancels out some of the quantities. Lambdas cancel, x's cancel. So I just have y1 and w. That's cool. Um, I like that. So it's... Uh, two, uh, remembering this two, two pi y1 over w, which was here. Um, that's gonna be my beta. So I'm as I plug in numbers, let me watch out the unit. Two times pi times y1, that's a four millimeter. Oh, oh, all my numbers are in millimeters. So millimeters will cancel out. So four divided by the width three is equal to, yeah. So this is why I didn't use a small angle approximation with the beta because it's definitely not small. It's uh, a point some um, radians. So let me store this into the calculator. And I'm, I'm, my calculator is already in radian mode. So I'm gonna be fine as I plug in the numbers here. So it should be sine of that number divided by the number itself again, and then square it. So, so that should be the ratio of the intensities. Let me plug it in and see if uh, <laughs> I made any mistakes. I joke every time I do this that it'll be embarrassing if it's wrong and hopefully it's right. Um, so the ratio should be 0 0.0107. Part B is right. And so part A was probably right, but I'll leave the part up to you to plug in the numbers there. 